Hey guys, so today we're going to do Blackwell et al, which is the second study in the development topic, the first being Piaget, which we've covered already. Now, by the end of this video, you're going to be an absolute expert on both study one and study two of Blackwell et al. So let's not waste any more time and get straight into it. So the first important piece of information is that Blackwell did two studies, both of them based on Dweck's mindset theory. Now, before we get started, I want you to just give me 30 seconds to run through the most important material used in both studies. This is called the Motivational Questionnaire. So the Motivational Questionnaire was, as you guessed it, a questionnaire used by Blackwell in order to find out which mindset the student had, whether it was a growth mindset, where they embraced challenges, they wanted to push themselves, or if they had a fixed mindset, which was somebody who doesn't like challenges and they want to give up easily. Now, participants are asked on a scale of one to six how likely they agree with some statements. You don't at all need to know what these statements are for your exam, but I've put up three examples on the screen just for your interest. And so they'd be asked on that scale of one to six, how far do you agree? Blackwell could use their scores to work out if people had a fixed or growth mindset. So Blackwell's study one was a correlational study. The aim was to figure out if having a growth or fixed mindset would have an impact on your math scores. Now I'm not gonna to talk too much about what a growth or fixed mindset is because that's a whole separate video about Dweck. But to give you a quick reminder, a growth mindset is somebody who enjoys challenges, they want to learn, they want to better themselves. Somebody with a fixed mindset wants to give up easily. They don't enjoy a challenge and they feel threatened by other people's successes. Now, on with the study, and I think the best way to demonstrate this is with a little timeline of what the participants would have to go through. Because remember, this is what's called a longitudinal study. That means it took place over a long period of time, and it's a great word to use in an exam to make yourself sound fancy. First, 373 students had their math scores taken at the end of sixth grade. When children started seventh grade, they then did the motivational questionnaire that we've mentioned before. This was to find out if they had a growth or fixed mindset. From there, maths tests were taken again at the end of seventh grade, and in eighth grade. Now maths lessons were taught as normal and don't forget this is a correlational study. This is because Blackwell wasn't experimenting anything. They just wanted to find out if having a growth or fixed mindset would affect your math scores. And the most important finding for you to remember is that yes, children with a growth mindset are more likely to show improved levels of math scores over the years. Now an important thing to remember there is that I said improved. Not that they have better grades, they're not smarter, they just simply will improve more because of that growth mindset. Now, study two is interesting, and it's the one where most of the errors pop up whenever I see students describe the procedure. Now, although study two was also a correlational study, there was what we call an experimental section. That means that Blackwell actually got involved and did a little bit of experimenting halfway through the term. So, Blackwell went on to another school and again got permission from 99 participants to take part in the study. The start of the study was really similar. Maths scores at the end of sixth grade and then seventh grade, they did the motivational questionnaire to find out if they were growth or fixed mindset. Now, here's where it gets different. They split participants into two different groups. One was called the experimental group and one the control group. Now the experimental group were put into a workshop that taught them about mindsets. It taught them all about growth and fixed mindsets and the impacts of these mindsets. Now this is where many students make a big mistake because they tend to say that the experimental group was the only one that took part in a workshop. In reality, the control group also took part in a workshop. However, their workshop was all to do with improving their intelligence, improving their memory, maybe revision techniques, that kind of thing. So it wasn't so much about mindset, it was all to do with memory and intelligence. They then took math scores again over the years. The maths lessons were completely unchanged. The only difference here was that actually in study two, they also took notes from the maths teachers to find out whether students acted differently in lessons. And what did they find? Well, those in the experimental group, the ones taught about mindsets, they were more likely to develop growth mindsets and therefore more likely to improve their math scores. Their attitudes and lessons as well was noted to be considerably better. As with all studies, we have criticisms here. The main one you need to remember is that they only used math scores. This is a huge weakness because maths is quite different to a lot of other subjects. So who's to say that having a growth or fixed mindset would have the same level of impact to scores in other subjects? Other criticisms include the fact that it was culture biased, meaning that it was only done in America, and also the fact that it has low population validity, especially study two with only 99 participants. And so for our exam zone today, I've got you a little question. This one's nice and straightforward because it actually gives you a nice little fill the gap activity. Sometimes you could get asked a four or five mark question where you actually have to write the paragraph out yourself. Please take a pen and paper so you can give this a go. The answers are gonna come up on screen now. And as you can see, it's just all about knowing those key terms, the facts, the knowledge about the study. So feel free to rewatch the video and make sure you know them. You've also gotta make sure you understand the key criticisms of the study because you could get a big question on that as well. Now, as always, I've got a block that you can play solo in order to test yourself on your revision of this topic. I've also got loads of resources on the channel, so if you need any other help with GCSE Psychology, do take a look. Catch you guys in the next video.